What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. A do dad be bad boo bop but you kind of poo. Welcome in. The Spitballers back again, episode 228. Jason has reached for the number of cards. I believe he's going to give himself a rating. He gives a himself four. a four. Four. This is not out, out that, of that, five. <laughs> this is a four. Uh, this is a four out of ten. I think that's probably fair. Yeah. You Wasn't could, my worst. No. No, but you could you could sense the doubt. And uh, I went. And, I went blank. <laughs> I went blank. I had nothing prepared, nothing in mind, and it, that really felt true. Right. You didn't yeah. prepare. That was about a four. Yeah. I, I thank you. Welcome, man. We have Would You Rather on today's show. That's a great question, as well as a draft. We are drafting the worst parts of being an adult. So yes. if you're, you know, if you're an adolescent kid, teenager, you're going to learn some things today, and maybe you'll be thankful that you are a kid. They won't learn a single thing. I know. I wasn't thankful. Or maybe they'll be fearful no i'll say wait no this is gonna this is gonna suck being a grown-up no because when you're a kid and you hear, you hear grown-ups complaining about things you're like that's your problem man that's never gonna happen to me i will never get old and i'll I'm never invincible. be a grown-up we should have a best part of being a grown-up draft yeah sure we will we'll do that uh cookies just for dinner. three rounds <laughs> just three rounds <laughs> um cookies for dinner yeah. yeah that's on the list you can eat what you want that's i right. still remember the very first time that I ever, when I moved out of my parents' house and I had my own home, the very first thing I did was I went to Costco and I bought the largest package of red vines and I just ate them all the time. <laughs> and I, whenever I wanted to eat them, I, I'd eat some red vines and I got so sick. <laughs> I was, I literally was throwing up red vines. I mean, I, yeah, I learned that lesson, you know, balance, moderation. Yeah. It's not a joke when you, when you're telling your kids slow down on the sugar because right. your, your tummy's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be drafting that at the end of today's show. Thank you for subscribing, following the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Tell your friends yeah, about the podcast. That's the best. If you want to give us a gift, mm -hmm. which I'm sure all of you, at, at most moments of the day, you're thinking, how could I give them a gift? How can yes. I give back for yes. everything they do for me? Tell your friend, friends and family, which I was going to combine into one word there. Your friend, for family? friendly. Yeah, tell tell all your friendly. Framulon. Framulon. <laughs> Uh, about this show so that they can enjoy their Mondays as well. Let's get it going. Would you rather? All right. I like this one. Tanisha over on Patreon says, would you rather have the ability to stop time for a day mm. or to rewind time for a day? What are the exact advantages of stopping time for a day naps <laughs> you just but i mean you want a day's worth of naps and then resume yeah. yeah i mean like if you can stop time you will never have to worry about being tired ever ever because if, if if like you could be going 75 down the freeway and like you know and a yawn hits you like man and then you go beep, you do the uh, mm -hmm. out of this world, you push your fingers together, everything freezes, or you you Zach Morris, time out, and then you just lay down and have a little power nap. Okay, so you, you're interpreting this as this is a power you have uh, over the next, for the rest of your life. I was thinking you just oh, got to do this. this is just once? I was thinking you got to do it one time. That's but, how I read it as well. So I mean, I, I'm so fine it, with either premise, it, but I we love, need to settle on one. Okay. I love what you're doing with napping during these time. There outs. would be no sleep. But you, if you this never was need the, to sleep. Right. But if this was the only one you got, it would seem a real shame <laughs> to be like, guys, I got this wish. I can stop time for a day. It seems so <laughs> I'm weird. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> like, like, if you only had it one time, w would you use it? Why would you use it? Like, I can't find the reason why I'd stop time for a day other than like nefarious theft. Okay, that that's. <laughs> I mean, uh, but how would that even help you? I mean, stopping time for a day does not give you access to things. It you just you just stop it when the vault's open. Yeah, you know. Okay, so you think I was like if if I was like on, like I had a loved one on their deathbed and I stopped time for one day, you get one more day with them. But then yeah, you but don't you, get to spend yeah. any time with them. They're frozen. Oh, they're frozen. Yeah. Yes. 
They you're can, not hanging out with them. They don't have the power. You have the power. So you're just alone in both of these situations? Yeah, it's basically like, I'm, I'm going to get more chores done. <laughs> like, I don't have time to clean the house. Hold on. So one time, time when you're super stressed out, you just stop time for a day so you can calm down? That's, that's not the worst. But if it's if it's just a one off, then the rewind is so much powerful, or, more powerful, more poor, more powerful, <laughs> so, so much, much power, so much power, thousand. Uh, I mean, I guess because that would correct a problem that happened. Yeah, something bad happens, or you're just like, what would it be like to jump out of a plane without a parachute, and then just mm. right before you get to the bottom, <laughs> what if rewind time for a day simply meant you could rewind time for a day and you just live from that moment like you, you don't do get to do anything you just like if you had a really good day right well like you, Groundhog could, day? you could rewind it and just live it again yeah well i i imagine that you could do that you could either choose to do the same things you did in which case the day would play out as it happened or you rewind the day choose a different branch that's the that's the route i would go yeah i would want to see how different can the world be if i make different choices and I think I'll be pretty disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering you only get to see the outcomes for that next 24 hours of yeah. how they're different, you yeah. won't get to see long-term impact. Yeah, no. There, I, I, it'll be like, well, it was pretty much the same day. I just I saw a different movie. Now, if you had the ability to do either of these infinitely, yes, you could, you could, you could not sleep ever, right? Because you could. Get, well, I mean, you're you sleeping, could, but you, yeah. you, you don't. You have extra time. You could take a 12-hour every night. You could sleep for 12 hours. Now. And, but you still age, Ooh. correct? So what? You're twice the physical. That's I mean, actually for, like a big. You, your physical. No, you're stopping time, so you do not age. That it makes sense. Time is stopped. So time okay. without time, you All will right. not age. This is like outside of time. Okay. okay. So All then, right. yeah, that's that's incredible because you have infinite time then of to do the like the the mundane things that are in the way of the of the fun stuff Actually. so it would be in your advantage to maximize the 24 hours of stopping time for a day every time or would you because I, I imagine it's a little bit boring you don't have family friends you don't get to do anything so That's would you why it's naps man <laughs> but like you, you get what i'm saying like oh yeah to maximize the lack of time passing you should run that clock to 24 every day but you might get a little bit longer. well i i think that in this question you you don't get to just pause time out, time in. It says you have the ability to stop time for a oh, day it's just or every rewind time. for a day. And I'm telling you this, uh, okay. if you pause time for 24 hours and the whole world around you, nothing happened for 24 hours, I think it would be a nightmare. I do not think you'd like it. You, The novelty will wear off. You will be completely alone. You won't be able to do anything. I, I, I think it's a negative. I don't see any positive for Dude. stopping. Well, Mike was making the point. Maybe you sleep 12 of the 24, right? You sleep, yeah. So you're always super rested. And then the other 12, you, you what do you do? You clean the house? You do the chores? Yeah. Can I mean, you do could, that stuff? You just like. Your the, wife's like, every time you come out of this thing, she's like, why is the house always so pristine? It's like the, the mundane things that get in the way of the moments where you're like, I'm really living. Like, because the stuff has to get done. Like, adult things have to be done. And I mean, all those times where it's the weekend, right? You finally have time off of, of yes. work and the kid's like, dad, let's go do this. And you're like, I can't because but this, this adult stuff has to get done. Most of the adult stuff though is like, you know, you got to go to the kid's birthday party. You got to go to the d doctor appointment. You, it involves other people like Jason, would this all change for you? If you could bring one person with you each time? No, the, no, <laughs> no, I don't. One think person's so. not enough. Uh, the, I mean, I feel like now I'm so wait, bringing you, someone else into a problem. We'd be like, oh, check so this if out. You and, and your be like, wife could do this, which if you could do like, it, what would we do? We wouldn't even know that right, you could you, do it. I right mean, now. we've already been doing it for years. And that's how I know how boring it is. <laughs> OK, you guys didn't know. What but, do you mean? What would you do? You would watch TV. You would but, sleep. But how is that? But like, how is that an advantage to because just stop you, time and watch TV? I already watch TV. Yeah, but it takes but your time, time is up. passing. You're 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 wasting your life right now. Yes. But here's the thing: if your, I your watched, most precious resource <laughs> is time. Sure, but if I watched TV during this 24 yeah. hour pause period, you want to know what I'm going to do? Unpaused. <laughs> Pro productive <laughs> things. I'm gonna watch TV, man. Oh, okay, man. well, that, I'm gonna see so yeah. much TV. You're, so wait, are you telling me that you don't <laughs> look at anything in your life and say like you wish you had more time to do anything else? No, I do, but if I feel like if I 
could find more time to do things. Click. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I think that most things that you would say, I, I wish I had more time to do X, that does involve more than just solo operation. Yeah. That's why I offered you a friend. I mean, like, I, I want to go somewhere, travel, do you things do like that. that. That's you, the thing I want more time you for. You could pause time for the day, drive to the beach, yeah. hang out at the beach for 12 hours, and drive home. What a nice time by myself. No, no, the traveling is by yourself. Like so, like like if you stop time, well, I mean, we're under the uh, assumption now that like electronics and cars and things, mechanical things, can still work. Okay. So you say, hey, uh, just sit in this, uh, sit in the passenger seat here. We're gonna go to the beach, and then you get to use all. Like, you can pause it, so you have daylight. You can go when whenever you want to go with your pal because I'm you don't have to you worry. A friend. You don't have to worry about travel, like the nighttime travel. We can't get this guy to take a I super will, weird. I will rewind so the clock and live that now day No, wait. Over. So if you could rewind it, why is that better to you than the ti other one? Just because... Uh, I mean... Because he can watch a different television you program. You don't accomplish anything. Because the stuff you accomplish during the day, yeah, you it's lose. Gone. It's wiped out. No, no. I mean, if we're being honest... You have to rewatch all your shows. This is just... No, you, you, keep, you retain your information. Yeah. yeah. Like... Who won the Super Bowl? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Now we're back it to always betting. comes back to that. But I mean, come on! If you, if you've got a time machine, you know some stuff. You can be very right on a lot of things, which is the key to life. There it's a go. key to winning and betting. <laughs> All right, Lucas from Patreon. Would you rather have the ability to manipulate the four seasons, or to predict the weather up to a year in advance? So, what would be the advantages of of those two? Yeah, explain you, to me the manipulating the four seasons, as in, like, I think that summer is done now? Sure. Yeah, you could, you could, they could be as long or short as you want. So in Arizona, oh, we've, got baby. A, we've got a glorious winter, yes, but we do. if you manipulated our seasons, let's be honest, everyone's living here. Yeah, it, it, because in the winter. You only weed them out through the summer. Ah, I mean, that's not completely true, because there's places that are super nice. Like, okay, so like our San cost Diego. of living will go up. Sure. Okay. Now I just buy a bunch of real estate. And, and by the way, California, which you're talking about, traffic is astronomically horrible. Yes. Now, can we affect the seasons? By like, we live in Arizona. There are two seasons here. The you know around the the yes, country, there's four. Here it goes from hot or to to winter. Yeah, fall is three hours, and then <laughs> spring uh, is spring is sixty two minutes. Yeah, exactly. So maybe. We could add some seasons here, add some spice. Because I look around the the country and I want to see. You want some fall? Fall. You want to yeah. get into that fall? Absolutely. I want to see changing the leaves. changing leaves and cactuses all. don't generally change their leaves. No, no nothing out here changes their needles. But you know, at the same time, predicting the weather with accuracy up to a year in advance is really, really nice for vacations. I mean, you want to go. You know, you, yeah, when okay. you when you plan something, and and we all do, right? Like you guys have, we we all three have a family trip coming up several months from now, right? How's the weather that week when you're when you're leaving? Uh, uh hopefully good. Right, exactly. But you could know and say, oh, I don't want to go. For instance, for for Christmas, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this just this happened. just happened. For Christmas, I got my son a weekend trip, just me and him. To go to Magic Mountain, we flew out there, and the park was closed because it was horrifically rainy that weekend. If I went the next weekend, sunshine and beauty. So w that trip was ruined by the weather. That's, that's I think, the big advantage of being able to predict the weather. See, I was thinking really noble here, though. If you knew the weather up to a year in advance... You could save every catastrophic thing mm. from happening. Oh, now you're thinking of like... Like so a, you know natural like, disasters. Yeah, you'd know when tornadoes were going to hit, so you could give people a warning. You knew when the, you know, the severity of those things. Sometimes people get caught off guard, right? Would you consider <clears throat> an earthquake or a volcano eruption to be part of weather? An earthquake no. or a volcano? Certainly eruption? not an earthquake. No, not, okay. not neither of those. So just so tornadoes and hurricanes. Yeah. It, the volcanoes don't erupt when it rains or something. So no. No, that's the, yeah. They're natural disasters, yeah. but not the kind that. Yeah, it's Mother Nature, not weather. Father okay. weather, <laughs> Father weather, as he's referred to. 
Thank you for clarifying. Um, so no, but but the, the, the big storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, flooding, all of that stuff that devastates the world every year. Yeah, no, but also true. vacations, Jason. It, it, right. I mean, that's a little more important. Yeah. Um, everybody's vacations. But would you actually be taken serious? You go after and- a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. After, I mean, a couple of people are going to have to go go down to prove it. Yeah, eventually. You just have to hit on some, especially like if you knew tornadoes, because like hurricanes, we know. To uh, get out and, a little and, bit. Well, well yeah. so you know at this time of the year. No one's ever sh- like. that's when This is when a hurricane happens. But a tornado, it's, it's I think very the, difficult to pinpoint exactly where and you when don't, it happens. You don't wake up one day and a hurricane is on your door. Right. And no one has yeah. like, oh, my goodness, what, what just happened? Whereas just, a tornado, you snap your fingers and it's there. Yeah, and the flooding one. The flooding yeah. catches people off guard. Um, the other one, manipulating the seasons, that's pretty much just creating a perfect environment. How valuable would that be? Like, obviously right now, you fantastic. guys complain about the weather all the time. Yes. yes. But you live here. Yeah, because sure. family, this is, this is where yeah. my family is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, by, by, someone put their roots here. By that r- response, though, you are saying that the, the value of the environment and what you live in is lower than the value of living near your family. So, correct. I, gu- I guess I'm just saying, like, if it was the most pristine, perfect, like, I guess you can go live in Hawaii right now. It's a lot to go do that. And if that's not everyone's perfect weather. Yeah, yeah I guess that's true. I think I'm going to manipulate the four seasons here. So, sorry, everybody. I will not be able to alert you on these natural disasters. But if I could make where I live exactly the weather I want it. You wouldn't need air conditioners then. Well, it's, the, the way I'm reading this question is the four seasons still have to happen. And over the over a 12 month period i think you fine i get a day of summer uh, only you're only going one day you wouldn't do like a month arizona summer may, maybe maybe a couple weeks I mean, get, get some pool to, time going to go into the lake that's yeah. pretty nice i mean it's just it, it's too I mean, long. the melanoma is a real drag <laughs> yeah okay. it would pretty much be winter here yeah for the most part now if i affect the seasons do i have, so like would i be changing it universally so now it's like 11 months are winter so the oh. rest of the, everyone in detroit oh, hates no. me because they're living 11 months of winter it's ice age up there but i'm like but be, i'm living in glory i feel like you are now a evil villain from some sort of <laughs> pixar film if you're doing that we, we gotta wall off this city quick they're all coming <laughs> so you're going seasons mike are you doing the predicting weather no way Give seasons. seasons all right todd from twitter uh would you rather survive without technology for the rest of your life but you get an unlimited supply of internet access for one day a week. Okay. Or the inverse. You have unlimited access to technology for the rest of your life, but no internet access at all. So how valuable is the internet to you versus the rest of your technology? What does technology even do without internet? Well, I like mean... You can still play your, your Xbox, anything that's local media. You can watch television. You can watch movies. You can... Uh, oh, I forgot about computer. I forgot there's, about cable. There's cable. There's <laughs> satellite TV. <laughs> everything is streamed. So I'm thinking, like, <laughs> you can't watch any of these TV services because you have no internet. But now, I do guess you count cars as technology. Some of them are. Yeah, yeah. There's I mean, there's tech in cars. So all that's gone. It's just that's, like, that's an interesting question because when, when we say the word tech, you're just I guess you're you're never thinking car. No, because you it's you're thinking uh, it's, it has a computer chip. Yeah, which right. technically they do now. Well, yeah, all cars, a lot, all, cars but, all new cars have at least some sort of chip. But mentally, there. you think car, engine. Yeah, com- it's, it's like a mechanical. machine. Yeah. It's analog. But but not having technology at all, but getting the internet access, what's the value of that? Hmm. If you just have that. So you're connected to the world, right? Like right now. We're connected to everything. Before, right. we, we were the one of the only generations when you're growing up, we didn't have internet. And, you know, the newspaper showed up on the door. You had the news channels, but there were fewer of them. Now, you're connected and you know too much. I mean, would this be yes. better for you to have to have the tech without internet? I have I was kind of thinking about this. Like, I got hit uh, on one of the social medias of one of the, the throwback 80s whatever uh, accounts. And all they do is they post nostalgic stuff. 
and they suck you in because it's like, hey, remember when this stuff? And it's just it's it, it's pictures of how things looked when you were a kid. You're like, oh man, yeah. Like, look at Orange Julius. It's got the the <laughs> orange and the brown. Oh, there's a blockbuster video. There's Pizza Hut where you actually used to go and you sit down. And all of those things and it's yeah. little shots of nostalgia. Yeah, and so I was I started thinking about it of what would it be better, you know? And we have now you're you're so isolated into your house because you because you could DoorDash everything, you can stream everything. Like, would it would it actually be better if you could go back? And you have to go out. You're forced to leave the house to go do all of those things. Is there is there a value to society for that? Yeah. Or or are you just romanticizing it because you grew up with it? And then if you got forced to go back to it, you go, man, this sucks. Why can't I just watch whatever movie I want to watch whenever I want to watch it? I mean, it's a good question for a number of reasons. One, obviously, any of us at any moment now could choose to discard all of that. And we don't. So there's that. Sort of. I mean, and we don't. And there's we can, some things that these, like Blockbuster doesn't exist anymore. Oh, okay. I and, see what you're pizza, saying. Like sit down Pizza Hut. Because the things around doesn't you. Doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah, you couldn't go back to those things because yeah. they're gone. I, what's, I don't remember the exact statistic or information. Like somebody had done a study and basically it said, you know, one issue of the New York Times contained more information in it than the, like, the average person would have been able to take in during the 1800s. Like in their sure. lifetime, okay. like more. Yeah, yeah. So the information overload factor, right? Like we have so much information at our fingertips. Honestly, it makes people bored with things that are like what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I, if if we really had to go back in time, there there's pros and cons. Uh, but I do think it would be pretty helpful for people to have to socially interact in real life a little bit more than. Every the oasis yeah exactly um i i don't see the benefit to saying no technology ever but i only get internet once a day well that would be for information that would be the only the only reason why that it's at your fingertips right you you would not be able to anymore in the other one you can't google a thing right you're back to encyclopedias oh, on the li libraries libraries are back yeah well, oh yeah well, oh no and uh what was uh, cd Carta? CD-ROMs? Well, yeah, was it, was it in Carta? Yeah, it was, was in Carta. Of, oh, yeah. <laughs> Britannica. When you had that Carta. first digital. And it had like two videos on it. Yeah, it was awesome. It was so awesome. <laughs> but it was awesome because it was, it was blowing your mind. You're like, wait, I don't have to go get, figure out which volume of the Do you know how many times I, need? I read a physical book and wish I could press control F? <laughs> Because I want to find, I'm like, wait, this is, it doesn't even compute with me that I can't search this book for something. So which one would you go Man. with? You said you don't think it's very valuable to have no tech and only internet. So you're going, yeah, it's no not, internet, it, only tech. Yeah, because it's not just, it's it's no internet six out of seven days plus no tech ever. Yeah. So I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much, you know, lighting fires in my cave. Um, I will. Right, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I, I will take, I will take the tech. We're just, we're just right back to the cave living. <laughs> yeah, all houses are gone. I don't even get a VCR. Are you in the same one? I'm with, I'm with Jason. I'll take the, I'll take the tech, but no internet access. Yeah, because the other way around, let's say you got your one day of internet, you could watch some streaming TV or something on it. But then the other days you got no TV, right? And you, you got no, no musical. I mean, you, you're your music. To, yes, yeah. The, well, you're back to CDs. With, yeah. Oh man, that was a Some good time. Vinyl, uh, but like you have to carry a notepad around with you because you, whenever someone has a question, you're like, hmm, we to, we're gonna have to ask the old Google machine that on Saturday. Yeah, like nowadays you have the you're sitting around the table and it's somebody's like, oh, I think it's this, and you're like, yep. no, I think it's th like at lunch today, we didn't know how to pronounce the word uh, bougainvillea. <laughs> yeah, bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. Which, yeah, whatever. Yeah, around Arizona, the plant's called the bougainvillea. Yeah, like, I've, it's it's not. That's, what the, that's what the plant people call it. But Everyone we, says bougainvillea here. Yeah, but we we were able to Google it, and then somebody ultimately dunk, dunks on the other person. Yeah, D were there dunks back in the nineties? Like, did you? Oh go yeah. to, You go to the library. Yeah. You like write it down, or you sketch it down, and then you come back and say, "I looked this up," and in your face. Yes, but by then the person doesn't remember anymore, <laughs> so it's, it's, there's no impact of the dunk. It, but you got to be way smarter back then. Oh yeah, did you? Because if you were Memory. very memories, well, either that or just confidence. If you're real, no, that is absolutely true. I mean, then it is true. 
You say that something, you know, if you're, you can't be proven you wrong. You can't be proven wrong. <laughs> if you, I mean, you just have to say it with confidence, and now you are the world's smartest person. You think I'm wrong? Go look it up. <laughs> yeah. like, go uh, to the library. Grab the keys. <laughs> I do like libraries, though. Oh, man. Nice and quiet. All right, moving on. Hey, Spitwads, it's time to talk about something a lot of people don't enjoy, and that is hiring for your business. We have, uh, we've been a part of several entrepreneurial pursuits in our lives, and honestly, hiring the right person is the hardest thing in the world to do, but we finally look forward to it now because we use Indeed. It is so simple. It's easy. It helps you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And uh, as a company, we don't have to spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates because Indeed, they take care of everything. They help us find top talent fast. They have a suite of powerful tools. And uh, if you hate waiting, well, guess what? Indeed's data shows that over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume matches the job description the moment they sponsor a job on Indeed. And uh, that's the thing I love about Indeed the most. You can hire in one place. It makes it so easy. I don't, I, there's enough difficulties to the hiring process and finding that perfect match for your company. And so you've got to trust Indeed for your hiring process. They know when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. And that is why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must have job requirements. And uh, we love them. Visit Indeed.com slash ballers to start hiring right now. Just go to Indeed.com slash ballers, Indeed.com slash ballers terms and conditions apply cost per application pricing not available for everyone if you need to hire you need indeed that's a great question i mean uh for those of you that have followed this show for a while you know that uh there's deucer's alley where the producers sit mm -hmm. now what you might not know is that where i sit in the studio the main camera, and you can go ahead and put the camera on there if you're watching on, on YouTube. It's a lonely alley today. So you can see it. It says right there, Deucer's Alley. It's just Deucer Alley. No, but from where I'm sitting, it's Deuce Alley. That's yeah. all there is. Oh. I mean, it's because the, the camera covers your view the, of the ERS. That's right. It's one and the same. So I, I just think over time, that's going to influence the way I look at somebody like Brooks. If every time I see Brooks's <laughs> face and Deuce Alley next yeah, to each other, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm sorry, buddy. Keep Deuce. But if, no if I start treating you like, you know. Like a Deuce? Then just know why. It's under, I got a big sign right next yeah. to it. <laughs> All right. That's a great question. This one comes in from Steven. What is something that you, uh, that you know you do differently than most people? Well, I, I sit down to pee. 98% of the time. There's a, there's a lot of people out there that do I, it. More, I, than, more men than will now, admit now what, it. If you had to say your percentages of sit versus stand, mm -hmm. Jason, you just said 98 and 2. Well, that is exclusively not in public. I mean, I'm a, I'm a urinal guy. Right. But, you don't uh, sit in the urinal. <laughs> no, I don't sit in the urinal too often. I mean, if the... Every if, once in a while, there's if, a saddle. If I got to go number two and yeah. the uh, stall is taken, you know, you got you to gotta turn around. Why and wait? Sit <laughs> Sit in there like kingpin. Um, so, but that is one thing. I think I'm really like at least over ninety percent. Mike, I, at home, I, I percentage. Oh, per percentage of sits for pee. Uh, probably sixty, forty, seventy, thirty. Okay, I'm probably in which in in, 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 in favor of my yeah, man. Yeah, I'm probably take a load off. I'm Re probably sitting seventy five or eighty. All right. See, that's what I'm saying. It's it's more. But the phone, I think, has a lot to do yeah. with this. Yeah. But, like, there's just, there's this stigma of what is a man. And it's like, well, a man can stand when he urinates. So he, you're like. I've never really felt hey. that. Oh, it's it's definitely out there. So, wait a minute. When this question from Steven is asked, what's something I do differently than most people? Maybe I cannot answer that. You're a zero percent. Are you a. Maybe. Brooksy, you're a stand only? Yeah, I don't. I always stand. Yeah. 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 And so I, how often not, do you put the seat up? Always, yeah. Yeah, I'm, you're probably a hundred. It's, it's not a manly man thing. I just oh, prefer to like, stand and pee. Dude, he's, Sally. A, he's an alpha back there. Uh, yeah. High T. <laughs> so you, what were you saying, though, Jay? You were saying this I, question. Uh, well, uh, Brooks kind of derailed that in the sense that I was thinking maybe this isn't different than most people. You don't burp. 
That is certainly one of That's my... That's different than I all hate, other people on yeah. Earth. I hate that so much. Wait, you wish much. you could burp? Oh my goodness, I wish I could burp. Uh, I yes. imagine that you're there's you still feel the 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 pressure inside. I don't right? know. I mean, I feel the pressure all in my belly. You know, it's like I just bloat. But I don't know how to burp. I've tried. I've tried to figure it out. This I've watched the, videos I before. Mean, listening, <laughs> I've watched videos. Like, yeah, because I'm YouTube tutorial. There's no tutorial. videos on how to burp because it's just a human function. Yeah, there are. <laughs> there are. Yeah, because you can you can force yourself to burp, but not everyone knows how to do it. I can't. Yeah, I, it just seems like it'd be, I'd be like looking up a video of how to lift my arm or how to <laughs> listen with my ears. Yeah, just tell your body with your brain to do wow. it. Mike, do you have something that's just so out of bounds for you? On it's like not. A, a, I read through and saw this because I'm like, man, what can I do? Uh, and the first thing I, I thought of is I. Uh, I snap primarily with my index finger. Oh, weird. Yeah, I know. You, I remember you telling me In, that, and that doesn't seem possible. Instead of my middle finger. I can't even. It's not really I a I can't thing. even do it. How? Whoa, I didn't realize how hard that is to snap. <laughs> with the, here, here's the sound of my <laughs> finger snapping. That's that's how loud I can get it, right? So you snap with your index. Whoa! Wow! Hot oh, shot. I got another hot thing. Shot. I got another thing, hot shot, that you do differently than others. You are an incredible whistler. Well, thank you. But, you, but, you but people, get, I don't... But people whistle. There's, I, I don't do it differently. You I do think. it differently. LeBron Just, James does basketball differently than most people. Cause he's you're the LeBron of whistling. <laughs> you oh, you got to give the people a touch. Uh, okay. Well, now I'm just laughing. And it's, oh, it's, it's hard. Yeah. But hard. I mean, I, I just, I, I'm a prolific snapper and whistler. Yeah, you do. You do that a lot. I, I don't know if there's one thing that I. That it's hard off out. the top of your head because you, because you may not even know you do it differently. Well, that's one of the funny things. If you want a little behind the curtain here at uh, Spitballers Studio. Generally, we have lunch here as a team, and one of the things that happens is we'll bring up ridiculous discussions, much like this show. Yes. And we'll start to, like the other day, we were looking into how people do laundry, and where do they take their laundry out of the dirty laundry basket, or do they keep it in the dirty laundry basket, or how do they fold it, or do you not fold it, or do you put it on a hanger? And so you learn a little bit around here that you do things, like uh, putting in dirty dishes to the di without, without rinsing them in the dishwasher. So we do learn a little bit of the, and the only reason we do them, if you think about it, the only reason we do them the way we do them is because somebody did them that way before we did. Yeah, because that's how I've always done it. It's yeah. been passed the, down the, to us the, by our parents. You're like, the first time I did it, I tried it, and that worked. So now I may not change course. And it's weird because when you get married, somebody does stuff differently than you do. Yeah. And then there have been many times in my marriage where I'm like, no, you don't do it that way. <laughs> and then, and then she goes, no, yes, you do. And then, and then that's the moment. That's the moment when you, when you go. Well, why is why would I why would I it's the first time you question why would I do it that way there's no reason I do it that way it's yes. very interesting say it's a, a a life moment for everyone when you say I do this this way because that's how I've always done it that is not a good reason to do anything you can say we've always done it like this because I worked it out, and this is the more efficient way to do it. But if your reason for doing something is just because, because, <laughs> that's a terrible reason. It's not a great Evaluate. One. Ask it would some not questions. Hold up in court. <laughs> yeah. All right. Laura wants to know. Solve the dispute. It's Why did you do that? Because I uh, always I, have. <laughs> yeah. What else am I supposed to do? Mm, over Overruled. Laura wants to know. Simple dispute. It's a good question. This is an easy and obvious question. What's the best seats in a movie theater? Ooh. Okay. If you're a child, it's the front row. Oh, and I don't understand why. Once. It's only that once for yeah. a child. Yeah, yeah, because that's the worst, the absolute worst seat in a movie I can't believe theater. they get away with selling those seats. I think I think that's unfair, yeah. Well, to be fair to the movie theater, they only sell those seats when everything else is gone. But and I'm so saying people they, are, should, they should not exist. They should be discounted. They sure. should be discounted. You a should partial be. view. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but it's just like it's it's so close. Like there should be a there has to be a legal distance between your seat, the closest seat, and the screen because there's there's some rows where you just this is ridiculous. And I mean, it's 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 not this way anymore. Because speaking of the future, where you like reserve where your seat is, which is one of the best inventions of of modern society. Because the the struggle of back when you were when we were kids, 
and you had to look number one, you either had to look up the, the movie time in the paper or you call uh you call movie phone, two 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 film. And it's Welcome to movie phone. <laughs> exactly. But it's it's okay. How do I know I can see this movie? I have to show up an hour early. Mm-hmm. That's how I know I'm going to get in, and that's how I know I'm not going to be sitting in the front. Just to buy the tickets. Yes. And then you got to go get in line. <laughs> then you got to go. It is like a, it's an open run. Yes. Once you're in there, like, yes, you're in a line, but it's not like you're waiting for the person to find their seats. You're just running around. Oh, man. Children, if you've never lived that life. So is your, this spoiled. is easy and obvious thing, Jason, is that you were going somewhere in the middle so it's it's in the middle but i would say that specifically obviously left to right dead center is the best of course yes but i think that the best seat is usually most theaters nowadays they have kind of an upper area where there's there's the stadium some, seating yeah the stadium seating where there's kind of the first row where you're going up that so it's it's you know, you walk in and there's seats on the level that you walk in and then you climb stairs to go to the rest. Okay. How, the many, first, how many stairs do you climb? The first stair climb mm. is the best seat. And here. Oh, so you're actually pretty close. I'm decently close. Yeah, but I but I don't have to. You, you don't ever hurt your neck there or feel uncomfortable ever. You're about to give us the reason. So I am very close and. Because he's always oh, done it that way. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. And a lot of times those seats are right in front of the area where there aren't any seats. They're like the the accessible uh the accessible. accessibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the <laughs> tough word. But they got the bars there then All too. Right. That's right. where I was going. And you going get to. to put your feet up on the bars with the best seats in the house. That's that's prime. That's now if the bars were in front of every seat, would you go higher? No, I I do think that I would go a little higher. I think the first row. I'm up. up. You're are like you, you're bad. not all the way up. Are no, you? no, I'm about uh like. You're about not on makeout row. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a heathen in the back where I'm not trying to watch a movie. I'm like probably three rows from the top. Oh, that's pretty I, high. I go way up there. I want I want the whole view. No, even no no partial head movement. I want my eyes to be able I to have, take it I'm all. I'm right in, in between where you two are. Okay. I'm not as low as Jason. I'm not as high as you are. I'm right in the okay. middle. You're the Goldilocks. I'm the Goldilocks of this situation. Let me tell but you. But I will choose the bar <laughs> over the Goldilocks. Let me tell you why my seat is better than yours. Okay, please do. You can pee faster? Um, obviously. End of end of case. Yes, I can pee <laughs> faster. Um, no, it's because I agree with you, Mike. No head movement. You cannot yeah. have to move your head one one inch to the left or right to, to see some something change on the screen. But I don't. You don't have to in those seats. Oh, you, you just attempt. There's a temptation. <laughs> There's no temptation. There's a temptation. You need to. You need You're to at tr- max peripheral. You need to try. You are at max peripheral, yeah. which is that's, exactly that's what you much. want. No, You're it's in, too much. You're in the scene. It's the biggest version how of the much, screen. How much of Mike's choice is, is uh, a little bit of being away from the biggest part of the crowd? Well, there's. Are you trying to get away from, from the, the group? No. Because if you're in the dead middle, I mean, you're really surrounded. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to avoid okay. people. I, right. I mean, I'm not buying the seat right next to. Oh, monsters do that. Unless the right. unless that thing is sold out. Come on, put a will, put a seat in between. I, I will say the the how it's it the, the reserving your seat is incredible. But I can see there there is a weak point from the the theaters standing because when I buy my ticket and someone's in you know like the best spot and it's pretty patchy. You're like, I will just go one seat over. So now a single person, yeah. if they want to sell that ticket, it has to be someone who's going to the movie by themselves. Which yeah, is, whereas before which you is just not as common. run in and fill it up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they were so and, small. The seats and, were so small back then. And the, I can't have uh, Mr. Manager come in and be like, oh, everyone, uh, we're uh-huh. sold out. We need you all to get up and pinch in. Because we all tried that back in the day. You would leave the seat, and then they'd come scold you and tell you to move over. Can't do that anymore. This is my seat. That just tells me that the day of the cattle call airplane boarding has to end. Oh, it does. I can't stand that. There's really only the one. Yeah, I know, Southwest. <laughs> get it together. <laughs> just sell your seats. Yeah, we're we're all fine picking them. All right. Uh, one more real quick. Sam wants to know what the dumbest way you've ever been injured was. <laughs> I know mine. Mine was sitting down. <laughs> and not, no, 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 not, not the act. Sitting... <laughs> 
down as in like a verb. That's just where I was. Seated. Seated down. Um, which I think I've had multiple. Uh, I've hurt a knee and I've had a calf spasm. And my calf spasm, we have a video of it. If you haven't ever seen it because, you know, we, we've we got security cameras in here. We are sitting, uh, I believe we were <laughs> in inter- interviewing yes. a potential hire uh, for, for the website. Who got the job? Um, out of pity because he had to deal with you yeah. getting electrocuted and that's what the video <laughs> looks like i am sitting down and all of a sudden i start basically convulsing if you took a fish out of the water yes and you put him on the <laughs> ground he flops and back and forth and back and forth that's what was happening i thought to jason my was butt. legitimately having a stroke oh i was man. so concerned and yeah you you had an issue yeah and the best part of that video is actually you two because Andy is immediately just so concerned, and Mike <laughs> could not care. I'm taking less. it all in. Uh, he was about to act. I yes, need, look, I need to anal- it. I need to analyze the situation. Panic doesn't it, it does no one any good. I do remember being a child and running, uh, running on the pool decking. So the pools out here in Arizona, and one leg going in the water and one leg, oh yeah, ooh, staying out. Yeah, I mean, that's, there was a that's pretty there was common. A, d- didn't stay out too long, did there it? There was a bruise. Oh, no. It was a big bad, <gasps> big oh, bad no. bruise. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, in an area that should not ever be bruised. In an area that hurts a lot to be bruised. <laughs> wow. So I know that was a dumb, one of the dumb ways that I've been injured before. Oh. It doesn't I just, feel that dumb. I just remembered mine. Okay. Uh, this was as, I mean, this is like a kid. I mean, so a youth. And as... Youths do. We're just doing stupid stuff. Like, and for whatever reason, at this moment, we're uh, I'm at uh, my cousin's house, and we're just we're throwing we're throwing golf balls into the, just into the grass in his backyard, <laughs> and I, I let one rip. So it happens with that technology. Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> this is how we entertain ourselves. I hit the uh, the patio beam. Oh no! The, it came right back. It came right back. <laughs> Dead in the forehead. No. And I had like an imprint of the <laughs> golf ball in my forehead. For, you could have taken your eye out? For multiple days. Oh, my God. There was God. the divots and so everything. So this pole was like right by you? Yeah. Oh, that is <laughs> unbelievable. That is spectacular. I mean, that's that's the dumbest way to be injured. <laughs> and to have to tell people, because it's on your forehead. You got to mark your, yeah. your stupidity right on your forehead. Oh, man. I wish that was on video. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. All right, let's draft. The Spitballers Draft. You just see the word ping right on his <laughs> forehead with the divot. All right, today we are drafting the worst parts of being an adult. Jason, being the most adult of all of us, mm-hmm. gets to start this draft. I'm a real grown up. And there, <laughs> there's really, there's two, there are two top picks to me. Okay. Um, I, I keep kind of going back and forth on which one to take, but I think this almost encompasses everything. Uh, it, it goes further than you think at first glance, because a lot of the other things you have to do as an adult all come back to this original problem Mm -hmm. is bills. Okay. It's just bills. You got to pay for stuff. I mean, when you that's that's like the number one biggest problem of being an adult is all of a sudden money is your is your task and you have to take care of it. Yes. You need it. Oh, you need it for everything. You don't need it as a kid. And you don't just get it. As a kid, you I mean maybe you got to work from some chores. Right. But you probably also get an allowance or you know, when you go to dinner, like, I'm not charging you, my kids. How'd you get that money? I waited a week. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You close. You have clothes. You have uh, everything you need as a kid. Yeah. So bills, I think, are the number one problem for adulthood. Okay. And and it, it's, I get where you were going between your picks. I mean, I got. I'm gonna have to answer job. Okay. You don't have to have yeah. a job as a kid. That is correct. My, whenever my kids tell me that they are, like, too busy or have too much to do. <laughs> You know, I, I get it. Like school is is their job, right? Yeah. That, that's the job that they have as kids. But it's not nine to five, and uh, so I think the job is the thing. Like you can't be an adult without a job. The, the so the job, you know, obviously people have better jobs and worse jobs. I've, sure, I like my job. 
So in that respect, I'm one of the few that would not look at it as a hindrance to doing what I want to do. But for the majority of the world, the job is the obligation that stands in the way of getting to pursue anything that you enjoy doing. Because you, so, you got bills. Because you got bills. You know, I'm not arguing with that. And uh, and then it, it perpetuates itself, right? You get your job, you got your bills, you you get better at your job, you you do things that give you more bills. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with the job as All being right. the worst part of being an adult. All right, so I get two picks here. My, I mean, my list is bountiful. It's just where do you start? Uh, I will. I'm gonna start with this one. The you are tired all the time. Mm -hmm. When when am I not tired? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I have just gotten the longest, most refreshing sleep in my life. Twelve hours. <laughs> I mean, look. I guess I'm I'm not I'm not tired when you're waking up and you have the coffee and then you're tired. You're, yeah. I mean, it's maybe there thirty might be minutes. An, uh, yeah, I was gonna say an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's usually like to me it's it's thirty minutes after you're awake. Yes, you get one hour of being not tired, and it's back to time. Yeah, I mean it's a great pick. I had it down as needing more sleep, which is the same thing. You're always tired. There's nothing quite like being an adult and having people see you when you don't think you're tired, and they just say, "Wow, you look tired." Oh yeah. man, it's a huge compliment. <laughs> I showed up at me my ninety-five-year-old grandmother's house, and the first thing she said to me when I walked in the door was. You look tired. <laughs> wow. Boom shakalaka. Yeah. Society. We need to agree on a couple things here of like, mm -hmm. number one, no matter how sure, and this is the follow this rule, no matter how oh, sure yeah. you are that, yeah, yeah. That, a, that a lady is pregnant, you never ask. You never, ever ask. And like, they give you the information or they're like, if that shirt doesn't say I'm expecting on it. Yes. Right. And and stop asking people if they're tired because, number one, of course they are because they're <laughs> an adult. So you know the answer. And two, you're saying, you look you look bad. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. You want to know what makes someone look tired? Their eyes are, are droopy. You got the and dark they, black yeah, circles. Exactly. This is, is not a, a compliment. It is like literally the one that gets under my skin the most. It, I don't know how to fix it, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because... There That's is, just me. There is no other commonly accepted insult. <laughs> but that is just an it insult. Is, yes, it's it not, is. There, there's not any other you know, adjective that you can use. for. You're, you're just insulting someone when you say, oh, you look tired. You're not giving advice of like, you should catch up on your sleep. Hey, stop. We're like Your grandma wasn't like, we can let's call this off. You look like you need to go home and go That's to sleep. Right. That's it's right. just no. Hey, thanks for showing up. You, but you look, look like real bad. <laughs> you, yeah, I was like, <laughs> Grandma, <laughs> you look old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All I'm, right. So always tired. Great first pick. I'm gonna I'm gonna combo that with uh, when speaking of just of ridiculous ways that you can get injured uh, as an adult. You can do this thing called I slept wrong. And then now my neck hurts. Mm -hmm. Like the most ridiculous thing. You're like, oh, I did it wrong. You're like, I did a normal thing wrong <laughs> somehow. I did a normal thing that where I'm not in control anymore of my body. It's just gonna do what it does as it's recharging. So what do you what do you call on that? S you slept wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had body breaking down. <laughs> yeah, maybe just, what just it, take that. Yeah. It, it it just it sucks because when you're young, your body does whatever you want it to do. Yeah. You don't think about it. That's the biggest thing about being an adult is you actually have to think about, oh boy, if I do this, then X. As a kid, you just do things and then you're also fine. You remember when I got injured sitting down? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was doing nothing. Yeah. I think the, I've, I've recently started to like, I've, I haven't had huge neck problems, but in the last, I don't know, six months, I've tweaked my neck bad t two times. One, I believe I was reaching down into the laundry basket to get a sock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other one, I was uh, drying my hair after a shower. <laughs> and that's, These are not. And then I felt my neck go and I went, oh, uh-oh. Well, yeah. there's a week. <laughs> Shouldn't have dried my hair. Right. These aren't like, oh, man, you must have played a big game of football. No, I was drying my hair. All right. That's a good one. Good one. Um, I will go with gaining weight. Yep. I yep. mean, the older Been you there. <laughs> The older you get, the easier it is. Everybody always told I was the skinniest kid growing up. Everybody always told me. Enjoy your metabolism. Someday, I was like, oh, this metabolism will last forever. It's called Hagen dazs metabolism. <laughs> I could have a pint tonight and not notice it. But once you hit a certain age, you have to 
eat well or you will gain weight. The best part, though, is you actually you can eat well, you can exercise on the reg, and still not have the physique that you think you deserve for all of the work that you're putting into it. You're just not getting fat as quick. It's slowing the fatness <laughs> yes. down. And it is a... You it, can't hold it off. It's a tricky thing because you go, oh, tomorrow my metabolism will be worse than today. <laughs> so you got to work harder every day. But um, that's what I'll go with is the uh, progressive weight gain of getting older. Yeah, metabolism <laughs> is at the top of my list because, <laughs> man, I miss it. Yeah. I really, really miss it. And, I, and I'm so jealous... We all know people that just have a crazy metabolism. They don't eat good at all. They yep. eat worse than I do. They don't ever think about a diet ever, and they're like a, a rail. And of course, they're like, "I wish I could put on weight." But you know, we all want what we aren't. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got bills. And we all do, we, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> part of the problem. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Th this was the other one that when I think of like the downsides of being an adult that you just don't have as a as a child are responsibilities sure you just you're responsible for everything it's your job who takes the garbage out it might be your chore but who's responsible me who's responsible for everything you want food on the table you, yep you go I, go go buy it you actually have nonstop responsibilities and as a kid the free i remember thinking how free being an adult is you get to choose everything as a kid do what you want you 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 get taken where they say to go you got to do right. it, you know but the but it's actually the reverse as a kid you're free you have no responsibility what homework is that like your one responsibility as a as a grown-up that's like if i go through the checklist of my day i am just doing responsibilities all day <laughs> Until I get to watch TV. <laughs> like, that's, that's why I watch so much TV. Then, if you paid the cable bill. Right. Right. Because <laughs> bills and responsibilities. Okay. Um, the next one here. Man, the, the list. You're making a real strong list for not being an adult here. <laughs> yeah. Bills, responsibilities. Um, okay. This one I'm going, I'm going uh, a little deeper. Ooh. A little bit more philosophical. Oh. I'm talking about the loss of of your potential Ooh, you know okay. when you're a kid you can do anything what like, job do you want to be it's on my list what? loss of potential those exact <laughs> words yeah those exact words wow because it means something psychologically to you to think that you could become anything if you wanted to yeah absolutely. and you lose it i'm not gonna be a doctor like it's just it's even if you wanted even to. even if i wanted to i don't have the potential to do anything in the world. You my, cannot be my, in the NBA. My course and path is set, and there are things like that, like the NBA. Like when I was a kid, I, I genuinely dreamed of being in the NBA. I know, long shot, whatever, but that was a dream. Once you get past certain age points, <laughs> those things are just, they are yeah. factually gone. The potential to do anything doesn't exist anymore. My path has been charted, and now I am an adult. Yeah. With a with an arrow pointing very clearly in my direction. Oh, I thought you meant to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, yes. <laughs> okay, so the loss of potential. I had it written down exactly like you did because I agree. That's one of those things that is, it's a strange thing as you grow, and you accept it. I'm not look. I mean, you accept those things and you're thankful for the blessings that you have. But obviously, if you, you know, you check some things off the list, you're not probably doing the um, cross country motorcycle tour before you have kids when you have three kids and, mm -hmm. and uh, a spouse so uh okay it's my pick it is okay uh let's see here i understand you have to check <laughs> <sighs> i'm going to go with a very simple one uh i'm gonna go with no summer vacation it's on my mm -hmm. list no mm -hmm. summer vacation as a kid not only does time go slower right because less of it has gone by in your life so it just it just does like the the perception of time is so much slower that summer vacation felt way longer than it does now. Yeah, I mean, my my youngest kid, a year is a, is ten percent of his entire life. Exactly. It's that's a big deal. My chunks are getting really <laughs> much smaller. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fortieth of my life. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I would say that the summer vacation, there's nothing I that day, the day school ended, mm -hmm. 
And in Arizona for us, it was, you know, ironically, it was library trips. It was going to sw swimming the whole summer long, yep. playing sports, watching cartoons. Um, summer vacation, it's such a good memory. It's just nice to have giant breaks. Yeah. And you don't get that as we an adult. We literally just tried <laughs> as a company. To give ourselves one conjoined week off together with our kids on spring break and realized we can't even do that because of certain <laughs> shows that we have to do. We have responsibilities. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I will go no summer vacation. Mike? All right. So I will have my- So that was on your list too? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No summer vacation. Just the, the three-month block is since like planning a, planning a week-long vacation is- is a struggle man you have to line up so many different things and if one tiny piece doesn't fit into the week i'll be like well yeah blow that up let's find a whole different week and let's start it all over again all right for my final two it this one it i mean it can fall under responsibility but i think it's so specific and it's the worst and it's it's just it's dinner slash mm -hmm. meal prep yep that is the absolute <laughs> You've been so you've been on a twenty Dude, year I, tirade I, against meal prep. I, I, I find no joy, none from the from the preparing of the meal. There's a lot of people that do, but I find nothing. You in, loathe it. I. You, you're definitely at loathing. Oh, I'm I'm past loathing because I <laughs> I will have loathing. I will have it, it, I'll have like anxiety attacks because I'm trying to do the three things at the same time that other people can easily do. I can't handle it. And I'm like, I'm burning things over here. What's your number one emergency meal if things go south? Like you thought you were going to meal plan your time. Right. What is the bottom of the barrel you're allow you will allow for a sink? Like, is it peanut butter and jelly? Is it cereal Just for the family or for, for the family? Oh. Like if you had to. I mean, it's, what can you get away with? Uh, one eight hundred pizza. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say pizza. It's always pizza. If you're if, if you need a fallback, it's pizza. But if it's like if it's stuff that I have in that probably have in the house. I mean, you're looking at like buttered noodles. It's okay. always noodles for me. Buttered too. noodles. All right, Sp spaghetti. It's, it's, I like buttered noodles. They're yeah, they're good. But you're like, uh, yeah, al dente. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take crispy noodles. I yeah. mean, like I don't ever desire it. It's good once you have it, but there, I don't ever think like, man, I can't wait for dinner and those buttered Your noodles. Your food does just show up for you as a kid. Yes, it's what makes it so annoying when your kids complain about. Oh it. Oh my gosh. Or they don't come and sit down when I'm like, hey, dinner's ready. They're like, yeah, I'll be there when I'm there. I'm like, I just spent I know. an hour and like, and I'll spend the hour cooking. You know how long that, that food's going to take me to eat? 2.5 seconds. That, I know. Like, the, the time is just a waste. I don't know. I, I'm not necessarily prescribing this, but I did just hear on a parenting podcast that uh, the mom had set up a rule where if you complain about the contents of dinner <laughs> on that night, Ooh. the consequence was the next day. It's the same thing. Was no, I, I thought about it. That's what I thought she was going to say. No, it's rice and water day. Oh. And you can have, if, if it happens, the next day, rice and water for all three meals. Interesting. Oh, brother. They call it gratitude day. If So there's a gratitude wow. day. And then, and then, so they asked her, how many times have you had to do it? She said twice, <laughs> only wow. two times, because after that, you know how thankful now, you was are. Was this a podcast on uh, abusive parenting? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah what, like I said, I'm not necessarily what do they prescribing. Do to the, is it just plain white rice? Yeah, I mean, right rice, right, yeah. <laughs> white, white rice, rice and water, yeah. Okay. Which, I mean, like, you can get through with that for sure. Well, I'm saying if, like, if you butter up some white rice, like... Oh, it can oh, be good. Put I'm some gonna, sugar, the kids butter are, and sugar the kids on The kids start <laughs> angling for it on purpose. I love rice. It's so delicious. Um, but right, anyways, then, go on. All right, my last pick. This one's a little more philosophical as well. I'm going with imposter syndrome of, like, you spend your whole life growing up, and when I become an adult, because you look at the adults, mm. they have the answers. Like... They're the ones they take care of everything. They know what they're doing. I will eventually grow into that. And then you realize, oh no, you're like, no, the I'm actually still that child. I know more things now, but I don't have the confidence in, in the answers for my children that I thought looked, you would have that, at that I thought time. I would have. I thought my parents had, it's also that realization of like, oh, holy crap. My parents are just people. Yeah, they're and just kids they're, that they're, are older too. You they don't, don't unlock the, the like wisdom box at yeah. a certain age. And so it's just it's bizarre when you get to a certain age of realizing that aha moment. It's never going to show up. You're still going to have tons of things 
that you're ex- you're expected to know how to do, but you just don't know how to do it. I think I do think we all feel kind of like big kids still. I, Every, I definitely do. Yeah, but we're all. Sp- we're all adults. Yes. But then you look in the mirror and you go, oh, man, you look so tired. Is it, is it a bunch of kids <laughs> pretending to be adults? Yes. Is that what we are? That yes. is exactly what the entire world is. It's all kids. <laughs> Some of them are just older. <laughs> That's it. All right. All right. So for my final pick, I have uh, the job, the weight gain, the no summer vacation. There's a couple in contention here. <sighs> Which one do I go with? I want to leave one for Jason <laughs> that I think he could go with. But uh, if he doesn't, it'll be funny anyways. So I think I am going to go with not enough time. Sure. And that could mean a couple different things. That yeah. could mean the on the long That's scale. That's why pausing is an ultimate superpower. On the long scale, you have less time in life. Right. right? Presumably. Not that anybody couldn't go at any time, but you got less time on average. And in your day, you just feel like you got less time. By the time you get done with all these, let me go through them, Bill's responsibilities, <laughs> uh, you're tired, you've done the, you get to the end of the day. And and the amazing thing is you're like, I finally have time. I'm going to do everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. As soon as you're ready to do everything you thought you were going to do. That's why the TV goes on. Because you're like, man, I if I could lay here. I, I can't do anything else. Like sleeping, but not with my eyes open. Entertain me, box. All right, Jason, let's see what you go with for your final pick. All right, uh, this one, I man, I could go so. I've still got so many things on my list that I love, <laughs> like going to the DMV, <laughs> which I won't draft. But that is an adult. When's problem. the last time you were there? Oh, it's been forever. I will do anything to not. They go have there. reduced the uh, the requirement for you to be there as often. I I haven't been to the DMV. It's been a good ten. I years. think since I haven't been there. I think we changed like my wife's name there or something. You can do a lot online now, I, but yeah. uh, go on. Yeah, um, they, we're doing great work over there. Let's Eliminating get, let's them. Let's eliminate that. <laughs> There's two here. Oh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with one of these is just for just for men, and so I will save that for the, uh, <laughs> uh, for the undrafted uh, gyms. Instead, I'm going to go with losing cool. Yeah, losing you, touch with what's cool. Yeah, like oh, eventually okay. you're not hip anymore. Yeah, you're just what's that like? And you, you can't <laughs> uh, <laughs> talk to me in one year, Mike. <laughs> oh, I'm not cool because you can't get it back, right? Right, like you can't. You, you the, then you're the least cool if you're trying kind, to get it back. It's kind of exactly like what you were saying, where you realize you're, you know, you're you're still a kid, but on the opposite side, because kids look at us and it's like well you can't be cool anymore right you just can't like it doesn't matter doesn't how matter cool what you, you are do. you're just an old person just, trying to be cool you yeah exactly you're an old person trying to be cool you can't be cool anymore and i think that's the way <laughs> that's grandma, the way grandma to, with her leather jacket that's the way to put it is can't be cool anymore <laughs> yeah like once you're an it's adult at list. a certain age it's just off the table you, i uh, agree that's i funny. agree uh was the other one the hair related yes one? it was yeah. i was gonna and i would push back the, the, some the ladies no, 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 balding as no, well absolutely no 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 mine was it growing extra hair is hair growth patterns meaning all the hair okay. stops on the head but starts right. on the back yeah it starts on the feet um i'm probably 10 years away from it like completely growing out of my ears and yeah just to a degree that yeah i've got to really take care of business <laughs> i mean what happens with the hair it's very strange it's you know, graying and all sorts of it's just like the hair stinks. well like the, ex, the extra hair growth is like what is yeah why did it stop wh- for so long yeah wh- what is like the the genetic instigator it, like help like is it because you're older so your your body thinks you'll be colder like you won't be able to handle the ice age as well so now <laughs> we need to get more it, more hair on you it makes sense why my hair stops growing right my follicles are dying yes. i'm getting older whatever yeah why am I starting to grow new hair <laughs> because in places they, that don't need hair? They didn't die. They just relocated. <laughs> yeah. They're exactly. like, I don't want to be up here Maximal anymore. total hair. <laughs> um, no, I, a lot of what you had was on my list too, Jay. We were we were aligned there. I didn't have much more. I mean, taxes could yeah, have been another. Yeah. I, I felt like bills and taxes is almost the same thing. Closer to death. I joked about oh, that. I, death is on my list yeah. because you're actually all around it now you know you you get to an age where all of a sudden your parents will eventually uh not be around and and you just see it more and of course you are closer to the door yeah no question uh, making appointments 
Oh, oh yeah. hate me. That's a good one. I oh, hate your mom and dad an always did that yeah. stuff for you. Yeah, the the reason why I, I don't take care of certain things of of my life and like my physical hygiene, it's not because I don't want to do it. It's because I don't want to call those people exactly. and set things up. I would love to go to the doctor. Yeah, I don't want to make a <laughs> doctor's appointment. That part is a nightmare. Uh, my there's the imposter syndrome again. <laughs> yes, you thought your parents loved it. When you were growing up, oh, they're so good at making appointments. Um, no, nope, they didn't. I have on my list, you you have dinners that yes. you hate, that is the bane of your existence yes. that you just have to do because it's one of your responsibilities. Laundry. That's on my side. Like, as a kid. Yeah. It just showed up clean. Just, yeah. You just have an unlimited supply of clean clothes. It was great. It's really the, like, it's the folding. Because the the, the, actual, the laundry process yeah, doesn't right. bother me. It's that you when you have to get everything out of the dryer and you're like, how is everything so My mixed wife offered up? me ten dollars to fold her laundry yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> she walked in the room and she and I was like laying down on the phone and she goes, Ten bucks if you want to do this and she dumped it out. All right. Uh there you go. We'll do a best parts of being an adult. I promise there are some uh pretty cool. Yeah, we aspects. We, we can maybe get the four rounds from that one. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> What did we learn today? Well, I learned what imposter syndrome was, <laughs> and I totally relate to it. Yeah, it's, I do. You, you we, feel I, like you never belong. I still feel like I'm a little kid. I don't feel much different mentally than when I was 20. Yes. And I'm almost 40. <laughs> I learned so that. Uh, I didn't learn a lot in the last 18 <laughs> years. I learned that Mike threw a golf ball in his face. <laughs> oh, that was once. brilliant. Uh, and let's, uh, did I learn anything? Probably uh, not. I just, I mean, I've learned definitively if I could stop time, I'm not doing anything good except other than sleeping. <laughs> That's fair. You just want 12 more hours in the day too. Imagine that would be fine. That someone's like, you look rested. Ooh, that's a compliment. <laughs> hey, tell your friends about the podcast. We'll be next or be back next week. Something like that. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.